Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today we're going to be doing a little follow-up video to my Tiny7 installation and overview video. And if you have not seen that video, there will be a YouTube card at the top right of your screen right now. And I would highly recommend that you go and check that video out so you can kind of be up to date on what it is that we are doing in this video. But essentially what we did in that video is we took a look at, an, at a... Uh, modification to the Windows 7 operating system called Tiny7, which essentially takes a, a, a lot of the unnecessary programs and features out of Windows 7 and makes it uh, fit on a 699 megabyte ISO file and only take up about two and a half gigs of space uh, on your hard drive. And I mentioned in that video that one of the uh, great uses for this operating system, or one of the things that I personally would probably use this for, is installing this on a SD card or a USB flash drive. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're, we're going to be seeing if we can install Tiny7 on this 4 gigabyte SanDisk Cruiser USB drive uh, right here. And we're going to be doing this on a Dell uh, Latitude D610. Um, I just kind of chose uh, this laptop, not really for uh, any reason, well I mean the only main reason is that it does support USB booting, which is a, you know, you're going to have to have a either desktop or a uh, laptop that supports that for this obviously work because you're going to have to be booting from a USB drive, so, or uh, from an SD card, so you're going to have to have uh, a PC that will actually allow you to boot from a USB uh, hard drive. Um, so what we're going to be doing in this video is, as I said, we're going to be seeing if we can uh, install Tiny7 onto this drive right here. We're not going to be uh, installing it on the hard drive on this computer at all. We're just going to be running it uh, on this PC from this USB stick. Now to actually get it onto this uh, USB stick right here, we're going to have to use another uh, USB stick, which we're going to put into this computer at the same time as this one. Um, and we're going to have to burn the Tiny7, I will not burn, but we're going to have to copy the files from the Tiny7 ISO onto that, uh, I'm using a 1 gig uh, USB stick. And I'm, I'm going to be showing you how you can copy an ISO file, uh, all, all, all of the contents from that, over to a USB stick and make it bootable. So just to show you, this is the USB drive right here. It is a, uh, I believe it's a uh, Danalec 1 gig uh, USB drive. I have it plugged into my hub uh, on the front of my machine. And I apologize for not using any sort of screen capture program. I just figured it would be a little bit easier to use it this way. But this is a program called uh, Rufus right here. And this is a very useful tool. I use this a whole lot. And essentially what it is, is it allows you to uh, copy the contents of an ISO file over to a uh, USB disk and it makes it super simple. It gives you a ton of options right here, all the options that you would ever need uh, when um, you know doing this uh, uh, type of stuff. Usually the uh, default options for this stuff is perfectly fine. But all you do is you uh, select your ISO image right here. I uh, already have the uh, Tiny7 x86 in there and we just uh, click on the start button down here and I had the uh, uh, quick format selected, so it's going to copy or uh, rather erase all of the files on it and then copy the uh, ISO file contents over there. So we're just going to click on OK. It's going to format it to the NTFS file system and then it's going to make it into a bootable file system. And you can see it just popped up um, with all of the files right here. It's, you know, it's again super fast with a, with a small. ISO file like this, but it, it is still copying the files over, but it, it just popped up with a new uh, Explorer window. Um, but yeah, these are all of the files right here, and I'm just going to let it copy over, which it looks like it's almost done. And there we go. It is uh, totally finished. You can see that the uh, green bar right here has gone all the way across. It's, it says ready. It's ready for uh, its next um, operation if you want it uh, to do so, but we're just going to click on close here. We're going to pull uh, the ISO, or not the ISO, we're going to pull the uh, USB drive out of the computer, and we are good to go. So I'm going to swap back over to the uh, Dell computer, and we're going to get on with installing Tiny7. Okay, so we are all set and ready to go. I have both of the USB drives plugged into the computer. We're going to turn this thing on. And we're going to press F2 to enter setup. 
Uh, I, I did also turn the lights down in the room so you can see the screen just a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna press F2 to make sure that our boot options are correct. Just to show you how you can tell uh, if one of these uh, Dell computers supports USB booting is if you go down to, I believe it's, it's under post behavior and it's USB emulation. And you wanna have this under, or uh, check to enabled and it says that it's set to that by default here. But this essentially, let me actually bring this screen up a little bit so you can see a little better. But uh, yeah, you can see it says um, that the factory setting is set to enabled. Uh, but this just makes it so you can boot to uh, a, you know, as it says, a, a USB floppy drive, hard disk drive, or a memory key. So we're going to go to the boot sequence here. and We're going to have USB uh, sets of first. So we're going to set this to one. Let's see how you do this. All these things are so different. So we want to press up, down, U. So it's U. We're going to move that to the very uh, top. USB storage device. And then we're going to do CD-ROM, disk, and internal. We want internal to be last. And we're going to press enter. And then we're going to press escape and save and exit. Now I shouldn't have to do anything. It should automatically boot. If I did everything correctly, it should automatically boot to the USB. There we go. Press any key to boot from USB and Windows is loading files and it's going to do the annoying autofocus. Can I change that? So yeah, we are uh, booted in here. Now I want to see because the uh, four gig light is blinking right now. I want to see if the Windows or if the uh, Tiny7 installer is going to find that because I, I don't want to put this on the internal drive. I want to put this on the four gig one. Now I did format that using NTFS. So we should be good because you know Windows uses obviously uh, NTFS partitions, so this thing should work. And of course, it's only going to find the uh, the internal one. All right, so forget what I said about um, me not recording the screen because, as you can see from that last clip, that that whole thing didn't really work out. Uh, it, it was not finding the four gig USB drive in the Windows Seven installer, and I might know why because I plugged the 4 gig stick into my computer, you know, into my main computer, and it said that uh, it was corrupted for some reason. I'm not really sure why, because I just formatted it, and I just plugged it into there. And so something, I'm not sure why, maybe the Windows 7 installer made it corrupted somehow when it was searching for something to boot from. So I could try that again, but I found this uh, program called win to usb this is a uh, the, well, This is the uh, free version right here. There is a uh, paid version but this tool claims to uh, create a uh, Not a bootable installer, but a full-fledged Windows installation um, on your USB drive um, all, all, you, all you have to do is obviously, uh, you know provide your own ISO file and we're going to be trying uh, trying that out here. It does uh, recognize Windows 7 Ultimate x86 from the uh, Tiny7 ISO, and I have the uh, four gig stick successfully reformatted and plugged into the computer. So we're going to click next here and see what happens. So we're going to select the uh, destination disk, which is going to be the uh, SanDisk Cruiser, and it's saying that the disk space is insufficient. So uh, that's great. <laughs> um, I'm thinking this is because it's going by the Windows 7 specifications, uh, not the uh, Tiny7 ones. All right, so it's been about a week since I've been able to uh, revisit this footage right here, but you can see that um, at the end of this clip right here, we were getting this error saying that the disk or partition space is insufficient. Um, and the reason why that I kind of said that that was happening is because um, that this Win to USB program is most likely using the Windows 7 uh, specifications where you're going to need at least, I believe it's like 16 gigabytes of uh, minimum uh, 16 gigs of uh, available hard drive space, which obviously on a 4 gig flash drive, you know, you, you only have 4 gigs as opposed to 16, so it was not letting me uh, install that. However, I have actually figured out a way um, to totally solve this issue. I was actually trying to look up online how you can actually solve this, but I wasn't really able to find any information. And I assume that that's because nobody's really trying to use this program to install like a fan-made uh, 
unofficial modification of Windows uh, like Tiny7. So a lot of people probably weren't really having this uh, issue. Um, but I just kind of got uh, the idea myself of editing the INI or the application uh, configuration file. And you can do this yourself. You can find this file uh, in C program files, Win to USB. If you're using the 64 bit version, you want to go into the x64 folder. You then want to go into Win to USB again. And there's a bin folder in there. And you want to uh, edit this Win to USB.ini. Um, I'm going to be using Notepad for this, which is basically a much better version of the uh, Windows uh, included uh, Notepad program. And this uh, minimum VHD size line right here is set to 16, which 16 gigabytes is the minimum needed space for a Windows 7 installation. So all you have to do is change this from 16 to like 1 or something. And that's what I did. I saved this. It's going to ask you, you know, most likely in Notepad, you would get an error saying that you cannot edit this and you have to run Notepad as an administrator. Notepad++ actually prompts you because this file is a system file and you need to run Notepad++ in admin mode. And it's very nice that it actually gives you this uh, prompt here for you to actually do that. So all we do is uh, we just click on yes here. It will uh, actually relaunch Notepad++. And then we can just save the file by pressing Control S. And now minimum VHD size is set to one. So now if we launch Win to USB and open it up, it's going to uh, check for updates here. We're going to click on OK. We're going to choose our image file, which is uh, Tiny7. It's going to find Windows 7 Ultimate x86 once again. We're going to click Next. And when it prompts us to select the uh, destination disk, we can choose the SanDisk Cruiser. And now instead of saying that there's an error, it'll say Windows performance might be impacted if you use this USB flash drive to create a Windows to go workspace. All data on the selected disk will be destroyed. Are you sure you want to continue? And we're gonna click on yes. And it says this is going to take several minutes. It's going to actually format everything on that drive. And as you'll see here, it is going to go right through and install Tiny7 onto this drive. Uh, so, and, and it does go, um, you know, pretty fast. And I think the reason why it was kind of giving that, um, that your uh, performance might be impacted is because this is a USB 2 drive, not a USB 3 drive. So performance is most likely going to be very slow. Um, so you'll, you'll have to keep that in mind. This is probably not the most ideal, um, way of using a, a sort of uh, a portable version of Windows um, on a, a you know USB 2 drive but you know for this video and for uh, demonstration purposes this is what we're going to use so you'll see here that it allows you to choose the system and the uh, boot partitions which we're just going to leave it as the uh, default right here it allows you to set the virtual hard disk size we're just going to leave it at 3 gigs which is fine and we're going to click on next and it's going to install it's going to basically take everything from that iso file and go through an automated installation process all for you you don't have to worry about uh you know putting in uh, any user information i mean tiny7 doesn't really ask for that anyway but it basically goes through and does a uh, unattended setup so which is you know super simple normally with a uh, windows 7 uh like a uh, you know regular image uh, it could take, you know, uh, a longer period of time, which is why that this option here uh, to shut down uh, your, you know, PC when it's done. That's kind of why this is here. But for Tiny7, it really doesn't take that long. Uh, as you'll see here, it'll kind of, you know, go by pretty fast. Mine, uh, because I actually did this before on this uh, same drive, and I'm just kind of, uh, you know, redoing it here for the video. Mine probably took about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, which is you know not you know really that long compared to what it could take the full-fledged installation of windows 7. so i'm just going to uh let this finish up here and i'm going to uh come back once it is finished we're going to actually try to boot from this on that dell uh laptop all right so we have uh copied all of the tiny 7 files over to the usb drive right here so this right here should be a full-fledged tiny 7 installation um, so we're going to plug this into 
the laptop right here. I'm going to try to do this without having to turn on the lights again. All right, so we have it plugged in there. We're going to turn on the laptop and we should be able to boot right to that USB drive. It should prompt us. Um, and there we go, starting Windows. Um, this uh, laptop does not have Windows 7 on it, so that is a great sign. Uh, it is actually booting right from the flash drive right now. So one of the things that I'm noticing right off the bat here, and this is something that is you know pretty obvious, is that um, it is taking noticeably longer to do all of the uh, first boot procedures. And you know, even though that this uh, you know USB drive is a, a solid state storage medium, um, it is going to take longer because it's only a USB 2 uh, flash drive, and that's kind of why that I said that you know you might not really want to use a USB 2 flash drive with this, uh, and this is kind of not really the best uh, you know way of actually putting Windows onto a uh, you know USB drive. It would work much faster. Um, off of something uh, like a USB 3 drive. This is something that Tiny7 did not do. This is actually going to ask us for like a username and everything. So that's very interesting because Tiny7, the uh, the like regular thing, didn't ask us to do any of this. It didn't give us the option to choose like our own username. So that is very interesting. So we're going to put in my name here. And Michael PC is already taken on the network. So we'll call this Tiny7. Um, and we're not going to put like a password or anything. Oh, and it's going to ask us for the product key. Look at that. So that is really interesting. I don't know how it was, uh, I don't know, something, I guess that win to usb program did something where uh, it kind of uh, reset a lot of the things that Tiny7 had in place. Um, I wonder if we can bypass this by just unchecking this okay so good we can still get past that because tiny seven said it doesn't need like a product key or anything um, we'll use recommended settings uh, this computer does have a built-in Wi-Fi card so it, it actually did ask me if I want to join uh, one of my wireless networks which I just said no for now um, but that is nice because in Windows XP I actually had to go and uh, find the actual driver for that which was a total pain, and it uh, apparently Windows 7 has that for me uh, installed by uh, default, which is really nice. I wonder if it's going to do all of the all the kind of automated stuff that it was doing in my uh, earlier or my uh, original Tiny7 video, where once it kind of uh, logged me in, it instantly started to do like a bunch of things, such as uh, cracking the Windows activation, and it installed. Oh, see, here it is, right here. So. <laughs> It's going to do all of that for us as well. So it's got the uh, un unattended tweaks and customization. So it's going to say, uh, do not use this computer until Windows has restarted. Do not restart Windows yourself. So it's going to, again, you know, do the same stuff that it did in the uh, original video. It's going to uh, uh, crack the Windows activation and do all that stuff. So I should probably say again in this video that uh, this is for educational purposes only. Do not, you know, use pirated software. It is illegal, and I do not condone the usage of pirated software. Um, and you are doing this at your own risk. All right, and we are back. And as you can see, we have been able to get Tiny7 working 100%. Uh, it's working perfectly fine, um, running off of that USB stick on the uh, Latitude D610. Um, I did actually decide to switch back over to my uh, main computer and I'm now using Camtasia once again to actually uh, record the uh, screen and just to get a little bit of a better video quality um, as you know it, I'm, I'm sure that whole uh, setup where I had it you know kind of pointed uh, at the laptop screen probably got a little bit annoying so I'm actually using team viewer here to you know get a little bit better uh, video quality and as you can see um, this is, you know, working perfectly fine. This is a uh, Tiny7 running off of a 4 gig USB drive. And to, you know, actually prove that to you, if I open up uh, my computer here, you can see that it has chosen the, uh, or set the uh, C drive as uh, the Win to USB drive. And it's only uh, 2.99 gigabytes in size. Um, 
which is uh, one uh, of the partitions that it made out of the four gig drive. So you can see here that, you know, yeah, we don't have that much space left on it. So as I have, have kind of really said, you know, this is definitely not the most ideal, uh, you know, case scenario, especially with a USB 2 drive, but just for something to have um, to, you know, put on like a, a PC that, you know, doesn't really work or, you know, something like that. And, you know, just to get like a, you know, basic OS onto it and just to, uh, you know, kind of, you know, play around with it. Uh, it definitely works perfectly fine. I have had it crash on me a couple of times, um, and I'm assuming that is because of the uh, you know very slow uh, USB 2.0 speeds. I'm, I'm sure that would not happen um, if we were using a, a USB 3.0 drive, um, as you know the uh, transfer speed is definitely much faster. Although I'm not even sure you know if this laptop, I don't think that it supports you know USB 3 because it is quite old. So even, even if we did have one, we couldn't use it on, uh, you know, this particular laptop. And if you're wondering what this uh, one gig uh, USB stick over here is, this is actually what I'm using to uh, uh, run TeamViewer off of. This is how that I actually got TeamViewer onto this machine, as I was not able to download it uh, from uh, the network, because for some reason it wasn't letting me access certain sites. They wouldn't load, but others would. It was kind of this weird thing that was going on. And I could not uh, copy it over uh, on like the actual local network because it was not letting me turn on uh, file sharing for whatever reason, which might be a feature that has been taken out of this to save space on the hard drive. Um, but just to kind of go into system properties here, which is something that we can do. If we go in here, you can see that this is a uh, Intel Pentium M processor at 1.86 gigahertz. It's got two gigs of RAM, um, and you know that is all physical hardware uh, on this laptop. And this is a 32-bit operating system. Obviously, you know that's the only uh, one that Tiny7 comes in. And if we go into Device Manager, we should be able to see um, kind of. Well, I was I was trying to see if it would show us like the actual model number of. Uh, this uh, laptop, but it's not it's not doing that for whatever reason. Uh, I did open up a uh, uh, Windows task manager here and you can see like just how uh, Few processes are actually running. There's only like a couple of uh, processes here um, We are only using uh, well only using about 90% uh, of the CPU, but you know you, you can see that it's uh, uh, rapidly uh, fluctuating up and down um, and we're only using like 400 megs of the uh, two gigs of RAM that we have. So, but yeah, you know, this is this is definitely not something that you're gonna want to you know use on like a daily basis on your main setup. You know, this is definitely not uh, you, you know going to work well for you. But you know, for something to uh, you know test uh, uh, you know other machines that maybe you know you, you don't have like any hard drives lying around for some reason that icon just went away. Um, Oh, and look at that, the machine actually uh, just blue screened. Um, it gave us um, a stop error. The program cannot start because percent HS is missing from your computer. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely one of uh, one of the um, you know many errors that that I, I've been getting. It's you know kind of just been wanting to wanting to crash. So as I'm as I'm kind of saying, definitely not something that you're gonna want to do. Um, on your daily use, uh, you know, main machine, but for something to kind of, uh, you know, fool around with, to, you know, something to kind of have on like a uh, like sort of secondary machine or a machine that, you know, you might have just gotten and you might want to, you know, figure out if it works or not. Uh, definitely, you know, this is something, you know, pretty cool and I'm glad that I was, at, you know, able to actually get it working here. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, definitely be sure to, you know, give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Um, if this, you know, uh, uh, helped you guys, I would really uh, appreciate that. And also, you know, be sure to uh, let me know down in the comments below if you actually plan on, you know, using this and what that you think that the best uses for something like this would be. Um, but as always guys, you know, just thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your amazing support here on the channel. That's going to, you know, pretty much wrap up this video. Uh, and as always guys, I will see you in the next video.